everybody. Hi. <laughs> so I am going live. I'm going live a lot uh, later than I thought I would today. But as soon as I pressed, I was about to press go live on my last live stream and then my mentor went live and I was like, oh, I need to watch this. So I've watched her live and now I'm coming back to talk about singing and all the stuffs. And um, hi, everybody who is joining. I can't see you, but I know that there is somebody here. But yeah, I didn't want to kind of announce this live and make it. I wanted to um, pop up sometime in the week hello darling so if you are here please say hi in the comments i can see emojis of who is here but i can't see names hey sweetie hey loves so nice to see you please say hi in the room send me some love hearts so i know that you are here um and i've really felt the need to get really vulnerable with you guys and I think one thing that, hi Michelle, I think one thing that the whole Corona thing has really helped me to see is that it's important to be transparent and it's important to be vulnerable and it's important to invite an intimacy. Um, so it means that I'm in the process of opening more for you guys to really see who I am and hopefully it really touches you and hopefully it really inspires you as well. So I've been singing for the past 16 years. And if you're just coming in the room, hi, it's so nice to have you. If you could please um, drop me a comment, send me a wave, send me a love heart so that I know that you are here. I would love that. It would make me feel like I'm getting a virtual hug and that would be amazing. And um, so, as most of you guys know, I've been singing for the past 16 years or so. And um, for those of you who don't know, I'll introduce myself and a bit about my, my background. And hi, 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 Leon. So, for those of you who don't know, um, I've been a session singer for a long time. So I've sung with people such as Adele, such as Jennifer Hudson, such as Smokey Robinson. And I toured all over the world and I did these amazing things. 2012, and I started to notice that I wasn't loving it as much as I used to. And I thought that that was really interesting. Hi guys, if you're just coming in the room, I am waving to you and you and you and you. And I started to notice that I wasn't loving the touring as much as I was. And I wanted to kind of talk about why that is and what tempted me away. But firstly, I wanna just say that if you guys don't know me, please understand that I am absolutely obsessed with the voice. I'm obsessed with the sound of it. I'm obsessed with the speaking voice, the singing voice, how to sing, how not to sing, <laughs> everything to do with the voice. I am pretty obsessed. And it was interesting for me, kind of feeling like I was out of alignment in the way that I was using my voice. So I went from doing backing vocals full time. Hi guys, thanks for joining me. I went from doing like backing vocals full time. Um, and as a lot of you know, and I decided to build the business that I'm currently doing, my vocal therapy um, and vocal alchemy. And so I decided to do like function gigs in the UK because I felt like that would serve me, you know, being able to be at home and um, being able to sleep in my own bed every night and actually um, be able to build a business because I'm home. So for those of you who don't know, if you're not a 
musician or a touring musician, what, and for those of you who are, you will know what this is like because when you're touring, it takes a certain mentality, it takes a certain focus, and especially if you're traveling the world through different kind of time zones. Hi guys, joining me. If you're traveling through different time zones, trying to build a business at the same time, man, I don't know about anybody else, but for me, it requires two headspaces. It requires the creative space where you're on stage and everything else, and then it requires this business brain, you know, dealing with websites and dealing with, um, oh, so many things that go into building a business, social media and all of the rest of it. And I didn't find that the two really supported one another. So that's the reason why I wanted to really um, do function gigs predominantly in the UK so that I could be home every night and do my thing. Now here's the thing. What I discovered is that the way I was using my voice and you know this is again me being really transparent with you I found it to be a privilege to be able to use my voice to earn a living and still kind of stay aligned with what I loved but what I found is that using my voice in that particular way I started to associate using my voice with earning a living. And yes, I loved what I was doing. I loved to sing, but I found the association to be a bit problematic because on the one hand, I love to sing. On the other hand, I'm using it to earn a living. I'm earning a living through. And yes, those things work, but what I really discovered that since I've kind of stepped away from singing for a living, being a professional singer, I actually sing more. I sing around the house more. I associate singing with fun more. And I find that because I've let go of the association, that old association of work, I now associate it with just having more fun and having way more pleasure. And it's one of the things, one of the basic foundations from which I coach from is to really dive into pleasure and what you find is that the voice opens up and all of the riffs, all of the agility that you wanna do with your voice becomes really easy because you're focusing on not technique and what's right and wrong to do, you're associating it with pleasure and the, the voice opens up. Now, so I am, I am building this business and you know, you've seen some of my posts, etc. And what I'm finding is that there was a huge problem. I'll tell you why. I found that the mentality that I had as a background singer, as a backing vocalist, and the mentality that I needed to have as a business owner were diametrically opposed. They were like that. <laughs> because as a backing vocalist, I, I know what it is to kind of toe that line between being seen, but not too visible, wearing black to blend in and being good at your job, but being in a supportive role. And by the way, I absolutely 100% respect backing vocalists. It's a job like no other. And there is a nuance that happens when you are a BV, a backing vocalist, that unless you're doing it, you don't really understand what that is. And I, with my kind of personality, it was a perfect place for me to hide. And so, you know, I enjoyed being on the stage and everything, but in the background. And so being a business owner, doing things like this, um, 
and you know writing content and putting out articles and 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 putting out videos and different things you are required to be visible so if you're used to hiding and you're so used to not wanting to be in the forefront your requirement to now be visible becomes a problem so some of you may have seen a post that I wrote recently and I was talking about that I was tired of, you know, the whole feel the fear and do it anyway. Um, because what I have decided and what I have been experiencing is that there is a step beyond fear. And I'm so happy that I think my hunger to not feel terrified being visible because there's something about being in business for something that you are truly passionate about that is very very raw and very close to home and so things can feel very personal when they're actually not and with all of those things, with the personalization of what you're doing, it can feel just everything becomes really intensified and really highlighted. And thank God, anyway, thank God for, for growth because I was really hungry to develop into a place where I just wasn't as terrified anymore. And so if you read that Facebook post that I posted um, uh, earlier this week, I think it was Monday, where I was talking about feel the fear and do it anyway, I was hungry to get beyond that step where I'm not scared. And so I really sought out a lot of coaching and a lot of mentorship and the divine met me with the most is the most amazing spiritual leaders and the beautiful thing is as i have grown i've become more grounded in the truth and the love of what i am doing that has helped me to detach from the personalization of it all, taking things personally, and it has helped me to just focus on how much I love the voice and how much I love to serve people who use their voice, whether you're a speaker or a singer. That embodiment, meaning that I'm no longer using my head to analyze and to to make decisions, but I'm using my body. Let me describe to you what I mean. Ooh, so what I mean by that is I go through my days with a very full sense in my belly. It's like a strong gravitational pull in my belly and it's like it grounds me really deeply. It helps me to be calm. But I think the biggest way to describe it is the feeling of being 100% in love with nothing in particular. It's just a feeling of being 100% in love, I guess, with life, with yourself, with the people around me. I'm, I look at people and I just see God in them. I, I see the divine in who they are and it's as if I've kind of woken up to all of these emotions and even as I'm talking about it I want to cry because that feeling of knowing without a shadow of a doubt that I am cared for and that I am loved and that I am safe. That feeling 
is something that I've been really cultivating and I'm so pleased because what I have discovered and those of you who are Christians or religious, you'll know that the Bible says perfect love casts out fear. And because of all of these loving feelings that I'm having in my body, there isn't any space to be afraid. I just feel an enthusiasm and a joy for the space that the divine has given me to really offer this work. For those of you who may not know what it is that I'm offering, essentially it may look like vocal training. But what this is really about is, and my mission and my purpose, is for people to really understand that they are the living, breathing embodiment of love. And it may sound woo, and it may sound out there and over there somewhere, but I'm telling you that when you understand who you are and what you are, Vocals takes on a life of its own. And I mentioned in the beginning how the voice becomes more agile and you, you hit high notes easier. And so I really wanted, I really want people, in addition to technique, to understand who they are and how powerful they are. So just to kind of skip back for a second one of the the primary reason why i wanted to to migrate out of singing into coaching was actually and if you've not heard this story it was actually because of adele um before the world knew that she had like this massive stage fright the band knew and i became aware of it in a in a in a quite a, an interesting way and it struck me because you know she's one of the biggest stars in the world she's had all of this success and she still was feeling away and I said to myself well look if she can feel like that and and struggle with any kind of stage fright then anybody can and my mission was to really help people understand who they are. The other reason, hmm, okay. Yeah, we're gonna talk, let's talk, yeah? <laughs> the other reason why I found it necessary to navigate away from singing full-time professionally was I started to experience a chronic illness and one of the symptoms was that I was having this massive anemia. I was in hospital, I would have iron transfusions, blood transfusions, things like that. And I just found it impossible to be on stage, to give as much as I believed I should give and when I sing I give everything and still be healthy like there would be times that I just didn't know I guess the adrenaline would just take over and the adrenaline would carry me through the gig when I should have really been in hospital and I just said to myself there has to be a healthier way for me to engage with the that has been given to me so that I do not feel depleted. And that's, the, uh, that's one of the reasons why my coaching will always help singers and speakers in technique, but the easiest route possible so that you never feel depleted because I know what that feels like to just feel like you have nothing left, but you still have to give and you still have to, 
you know what it's like, seniors. You still have to put on the makeup and you still have got to smile and put on the heels. And the last thing you want to do is any of those things. You really just want to be in your bed because you're just like, lad, you know. Um, I'm a lot better now. I am a lot better. And I found it necessary to really cultivate a life where I didn't have to expend so much energy. And I found it necessary to be more creative in the way that I was using my voice. So some of you have seen that I'm on an EP featuring, featuring me, it's Asa Maple's EP. And you know, we wrote together and during, during the years of sessioning, I wasn't really writing anything. I was enjoying, I was having a ball. I was having a blast doing all of the things and traveling to all of the places and singing everything, but I wasn't really being creative. So now I get to be, not because I've stopped doing sessions, but because I've, I am more adamant now that I want to be more creative and I want to have more fun and I want the use of my voice to have more pleasure in it. Um, so let's fast forward to maybe 18 months ago, right? I'm helping singers and, and I'm coaching and I'm doing my thing. And then the divine kind of downloads to me that I am to help public speakers too. And I'm like, that's interesting. Interesting. And then I remember I was watching um, some YouTube videos. I think it was The Breakfast Club. I was watching some interviews and I remember listening to people being interviewed and kind of having this sixth sense about the type of person they are and what their belief systems were just based on the frequency of their voice. So singers, musicians, you guys will understand that if you're at a sound check, yeah, or if you're EQing your music, at the base level of things, there's a top frequency, there's a middle frequency, and then there's a low frequency, right? I started to hear speaking voices like that, and I started to understand what they meant. Stay with me, yeah, it's bananas. But basically, I, I soon discovered that top frequencies in the voice, they really indicate a lot of clarity, a lot of delight. Um, bottom frequencies, this is all very general, yeah? Bottom frequencies usually indicate someone who is more grounded, uh, more practical, and there's the middle frequency, there's all kinds of things that it could indicate, and it kind of just depends on what it sounds like. And I remember listening to these people. I could hear the frequency separate out. You know, if you were to record something on Logic and you'd be able to see the waveform, I could see it. It was bananas. I could see vocals or, or speech being represented like a barcode. You know, the thick line. Lines, thick black lines in the white space and the thin white line in the white space. I could see voices like that. And I knew what the barcode meant and I, and I understood what was happening. And I was like, what the heck is this? So I would listen to people and then I would listen to people, like listen to them twice. And I was like, whoa, what is this? So I started to call it a vocal code because the whole barcode thing, right? And then what I started to do is to really listen to my clients and I could pick up what was happening with them through the frequency of their voice. I could hear their characteristics, their belief systems, things that they have not told me, things that I was not privy to and every single time being accurate. And I was like, whoa, this is huge. I mean, the only other people that I have heard of doing this is like in ancient Egypt, 
you know, like there's over 6 billion people on the planet. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. But I just, I just, I was just fascinated and I still am fascinated with this gift and how it's all playing out. So in me helping public speakers, in me really serving singers, I believe that there is a step beyond fear. Some people say, fake it till you make it. Some people say that nerves and adrenaline can serve you. And they can in a way. But you know something? I've really discovered that the truth is that when you feel full in your body of love and purpose and warmth, it transforms the voice in a way that cannot be done through thought alone or even through technical practice. And you'll notice that I'm super passionate about what it is that I'm talking about because I know the transformation that my own voice has taken. I started hearing people say to me your voice is so soothing it's so calming it's so warm and for example if I'm ever voice changes you know if you're talking about your child you know your newborn baby your voice softens and it warms up and so the voice is able to sound different depending on what you're thinking about so imagine if you're thinking about or experiencing love, carrying it around in your body all day, what that would do to your vocal performance and what that would do to everybody who's hearing you. And just to quote another um, passage of the, of, of the Bible where it says, a soft answer turns away wrath. There's something about that. There's something about a voice which is designed to neutralize anger and how powerful that is. Like, my goodness. So, I felt it necessary to go live to talk to you about the behind the scenes stuff that I've not shared publicly before. Because you see people on Facebook, don't you? And you don't really understand what's happening behind the post and what could be happening behind the post. All you know is that they project an image and you may not be aware of what's happening. But this is what's been happening for me. And that loving space that I've been talking to you guys about, all when I am occupying and I'm occupying that space more and more, so occupying that space, all I want to do is share. All I want to do is feel delighted and have joy and with absolute pleasure share with you guys what I'm doing. And I am... I feel like I'm on the cusp of something big and I don't know what it is. And I'm happy to not know. I'm happy to be guided and just to take the divine's hand like a little girl and just be led. I'm very happy with that. Um, I'm also happy to sing more for pleasure, to collaborate more, to create, to write. Um, so if you're out there, and you want to collaborate with me. I love acoustic music. I love folk. Let's go, man. Let's do this. Um, and if you are out there and you desire to have a voice that transforms your career, then I'm definitely your girl, <laughs> whether that's uh, speaking or singing. There's still some of you here. I don't know if any of you have any questions. I am very open to um, to answering your questions. 
I am an open book, I have nothing to hide and nothing to defend. And um, it's been my absolute honor to be on your timeline and to go live. And thank you for holding space for me as things got quite emotional, but in a really nice way. Um, at least for me, I hope it was for you too. <laughs> And um, yeah, unless there's any questions, we'll leave it there. Um, one other thing I will say is that when I kind of told a couple of colleagues that I didn't want to tour anymore, and the other reason that I didn't want to tour was because I really couldn't see how I would build my own stuff and be so intensely involved with somebody else's stuff. Um, and I have loved it. I have loved, loved, loved everything about the career that I built. Loved it. I loved all the countries. I loved all the flights, even loved being on the tour bus. I loved being a support system for artists. I, 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 I believe in being a support system for artists and now I just get to do it in a different way. Some of um, my colleagues, some of you who are friends with me on Facebook thought I was mad for kind of leaving that behind. But I kind of knew that my support for artists had just shifted, that's all. It had just shifted. It hadn't stopped. Um, so now I just, I, I support artists in a different way and now I support public speakers too. So I can't see any questions. Uh... I want to say thank you. I'm kind of having a look at the people that joined me. Thank you so much for people who were rocking with me till the very end. And um, if there are no questions, I'll leave it there. You can always leave uh, questions on the replay and I'm happy to um, answer them. And uh, yes, this is me. Ting. <laughs> All right, my loves, um, so I'll speak to you soon, and yes. Okay, bye.